So I've got a new book out. Uh, it's called The Algorithmic Leader. And as part of writing that book, I actually interviewed many people like you, many leaders in different organizations, many of them in FinTech. And I said, what are you doing to prepare for the future? And sometimes I got what I, I think was a rehearsed answer. People said, listen, Mike, you know, we're a very traditional organization. We've been around for many years. We realize we need to be more like an agile startup. Have you heard that before? Big traditional organization needs to be more like a startup. I know, it sounds like a good idea until you think about it. And then it starts to sound, I don't know, vaguely inappropriate, uh, like someone having a corporate midlife crisis. You know, I put startup into Google and I got this really annoying photo of attractive white people with perfect teeth. <laughs> what is wrong with stock photography? I mean, I, I have so many questions. And I mean, what is going on here? What did they, did they start their company two weeks ago and take some selfies and then sell to Google for a billion dollars? Don't you just want to turn that monitor around? I feel like there'd be something really inappropriate on that screen. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, if you can't be creative and agile when there's only four of you, there must be something profoundly wrong with all of you, right? Anyone can be disruptive when there's four of you. But what happens when there's 40 or 400 or 4,000? And we often get caught in this idea of small is beautiful, but, but actually the world is complex and the world often demands scale. And in fact, sometimes your greatest strength is scale. I mean, ask yourself, you have your community, but what can you achieve working together? How can you as, you know, Davids come together and tackle the industry goliaths? Because the real question isn't about being small or big. In the end, it's about how do you be different? Uh, I mean, who would have thought we would have ever valued a pizza company like it's a technology company? But Domino's is a technology company. You know, in some stores, they even use computer vision to scan the pizzas, to see using AI whether the pepperoni is in exactly the right spot. Seriously, who does that? Domino's does that. And ultimately, it's that commitment to leveraging disruptive technology to transform what you do out of the boundaries of what people think is appropriate for your sector that will get people to change their opinion of really what it is you're doing. And that's critical because, you know, you can upgrade your technology. It won't do anything. It'll just change the hardware of your business. If you really want to transform, you've got to figure out how to make culture your operating system. This is where the magic is. And, and it's the hardest part because culture here is the system of interactions by which you and your teams make decisions. The way you solve problems, uh, the way you identify opportunities. It's not something you can buy or borrow from another organization. It has to come from within. And that process of trying to figure out how you take new technologies and use it to transform what you do is incredibly difficult. It is, but incredibly valuable. You know, we've been here before. If you think about it, even more disruptive than AI was the invention of technologies like electricity. So 1831, Michael Faraday invents the electric dynamo. How long do you think it took for someone to come along and say, huh, we can use that to transform a core business process, like manufacturing. What do you think? Five years, 10 years, 15 years, 50 years? About 82 years it took from that invention to someone like Henry Ford to come along and go, you know what? With this electricity thing, we could probably design factories in a different way. Now, I know that sounds like, why did it take them that long? But you know, even in the early 1900s, they would take a industrial age factory powered by steam. They took out the steam engine and they put in an electric engine. They left the drive shaft in place, the whole design of the factory, you know, but with electricity, things could be more distributed and decentralized. You could have moving assembly lines. It took almost a hundred years for them to figure that out. Do you know what? This time around, we will not have a hundred years. If we can't very quickly figure out how AI and algorithms and automation can transform the way we deliver value for our communities, not only will we leave ourselves open to new competitors and competition, we may not be around to see out what really happens.